working with the simplest subnets doesn't really require any math. So let's build some confidence. Do some practice exercises right now working with those simple subnets. This exercise stems from Volume 1, Part 4, Chapter 11, the first section, and I have a matching video on that for a little context. But what I'm after here is just the basic rules of what's legal inside the simplest subnet. So in these exercises, I'll show you a diagram with some IP addresses and consider the router address as correct. That is, if there's a conflict between a router and a PC's address, the router one is correct, the PC is wrong. All right. In this, all subnets use a slash 24 mask. That's the simplest case, and it gives us a very predictable, easy pattern, and we can not even have to worry about what the math and the math processes are. So there'll be some addresses in these examples that break the rules, so find the rule breakers for things like, hey, uh, which are using reserved values in a subnet, which are using values that are in a different subnet, so addresses that should be in one subnet should have numbers that are in the same subnet. And then which roam outside the legal values in any octet in an address. All right, so those are the rules. Let's do some problems. So here's your first scenario. The addresses near the routers are the router addresses. The ones near the PCs are the PC addresses. Look at the numbers and come up with any that are rule breakers and note those. I'll give you five seconds to hit pause so you can ponder it before I keep going. All right, I'm talking about it now, so hit pause. Here we go. So at the upper right, we've got a couple. 10.9.32.1, notice the 32, that third octet. With these simplest cases with a slash 24 mask, it's the first three octets that need to be the same. 10.9.31, 10.9.32, that's different. So it's an address in a different subnet. This next one up here, 10.9.31.0, that's the subnet ID in that subnet. When using a slash 24 mask, the subnet ID ends in zero. So that's a reserved value. All right, so hopefully you're getting the idea a little bit here. Now on the lower right, the router address is 10441, which we assume is correct per my rules for this exercise. How about these addresses up here? Well, if you glance at them, notice the fourth octet. The fourth octet and all three of those have a number that's out of range. Any octet has to be between 0 and 255 inclusive, and those are in the 300 range. So all three of those are wrong just because the number is too big in the fourth octet. So those are all the problems here in this first scenario. Now, just to recap the rules before you do the others, when you've got a slash 24 mask, here's a summary of the rules. The subnet ID, it ends in 0. So whatever the first three octet values are, the subnet ID ends in 0. And then the subnet broadcast address, whatever the first three octets are, it ends in 255. Now, that's not true of all subnets, just all subnets that have a slash 24 mask, like these simple cases in this exercise. Then for the usable addresses in the subnet, they have the same pattern in the first three octets, and then some number between 1 and 254 in that fourth octet. All right, so those are the rules. And just remember to keep within that 0 to 255 range in total for any number in any octet. Next up here is problem 2 or scenario 2. I'll give you five seconds to pause. You can ponder which ones are rule breakers. All right, here we go. Let's see what we've got here. First, if we look on the far left, 10211 is the router address, which per my rules say that one's correct. Do any not match? Well, the first three octets should be the same, 1021, and we've got 1023, and 1023, and 1023. It looks like the third octet's different in all three of these over here, so we've got a line through those. They're just addresses in the wrong subnet. Now you might think, oh, what's the big deal? Well, the network doesn't work. These hosts can't communicate through out R1 to the rest of the network. But all we've done so far in sequence is talk about they're breaking the rules of addressing. Addressing rules have to work, so routing works. So that's why you want to watch for these things. What else? 10, 18, 5, 20, uh, 254 over here for router R2. 10, 18, 5 matches up. 
but 261 is simply out of range. You can't have a number outside of the range 0 to 255 over there, or in any octet for that matter. Final case, 10, 11, 25, that 128 is legal there on router R3. 10, 11, 2, instead of 25, probably a typo. So the first three octets need to have the same value in these simple subnets with a slash 24 mask. And this one doesn't. Let's see, the other ones look good, so I think that's it for scenario two. Final scenario for this set of exercises, same diagram, different numbers. So here's your five seconds to hit pause, and then I'll talk about it. Here we go, there's one in each section, the answers. So our router address, 10.7.4.99, 10.7.4, 10.7.4, 10.7.7, 10, that's the problem. The first three octets should be the same in these simple subnets, so that one's wrong. On R2, 10.10.10.10, 10, 10, 10, 10. about the first three octets, 10.10.10, 10.10.10, 10.10.10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, that checks out. Fourth octet, dot 10, dot 253, dot 254, dot 255, they're in the actual range allowed, but the dot .255 address makes this the broadcast address in these simple subnets. We can't assign that to a host to use, so that's wrong. And this bottom one, turns out the one that's incorrect is also the subnet broadcast address in that bottom right subnet. Hope you enjoyed the practice. If you're new here, click subscribe and bell so you'll hear about new videos. Give me a comment. Let me know if you like these and if you'd like to see more of this kind or any other subnetting exercises. Thanks for hanging out. Talk to you.